Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. My, 31, three Alma kids. Wife, 30, of seven years separated. Then had affairs. Now some childhood trauma came up and I don't know how I can, or if I even should, get rid of the hope of reconciliation. If you're familiar with this story, you can skip to the latest update, update two, in the time stance. To cut a long backstory short, my wife, 30, and I, 31, have been living separated for about one and a half years, married for seven years, one year of it and the same house because of our three children, currently living with me, but the new arrangement will be three and four days and alternation with each of his parents. Before the separation, there was a marriage crisis, also some bad bedroom problems, which we had tried to solve with professional help, but at this time, she probably already did not want any more. Before the new arrangement, we saw each other regularly and also talked. Now, she has recently remembered that, as a child, she had a very traumatic experience, which is probably triggered during the marriage crisis. There are also parallels to what happened. She would discuss this and other unprocessed feelings with a psychologist and has already made an appointment. Since she moved out, she has already had several affairs because, for her, the marriage only exists on paper anymore. She is also more or less looking for something new, but is also still unclear what she wants at all. Before the childhood trauma came out, I was actually ready to inform myself about divorce law steps because I realized there was no hope. But since I know about the trauma, I'm not really sure anymore. Somehow, I have the hope that, through the psychological talks that are pending, she can process all the problems and pain from the time before me, and also what happened in the crisis, and then possibly imagine coming back. I know the chance of this is extremely small and it would probably be healthier for me to just make the cut, but somehow I can no longer let her go so easily because of the new knowledge. For understandable reason why she doesn't want to try it again is a lack of trust and the fear that it will fall back into the old pattern after a certain time. I'm pretty messed up emotionally and also scarred of the decisions I'll probably have to make and accept. I think I need someone with a neutral point of view. If anyone has any tips on how I can change my mindset to stop seeing hope, I would also appreciate it. Update 1 Some time has passed since my last post. Small recap. Wife moved out a while ago, and the meanwhile, met and had sexual contact with other men. Due to the new findies, childhood trauma, for which she now wants to go to therapy, not sure she is actually doing it. I was not sure whether I should have hope or not. I have since tried to keep the contact to a minimum and only discuss things that concern the children. This has worked more or less well. We still had a lot of contact, especially because of the upcoming birthday of one of her children. I felt better, but of course still had many bad thoughts about what she does or doesn't do in regards with men. During the last conversation, she assured me that she will not meet any other men anymore because she doesn't want to, and she has to find out what she really wants first. I was sure that she does it anyway, but I had no proof. Then was the birthday of my child. We were together with the family. She was, of course, also present. For me, it was super weird. I felt really uncomfortable as she does one on happy life and speaking like a friend to me while everything is broken. I also felt that something was weird. The kid's birthday party was planned for the day after. I called her in the morning and told her I thought it would be better if she didn't come. The kids were with me that day anyway. I explained why, but she insisted on coming. The party was going well, kids had fun and all, but I couldn't resist and then it happened. I couldn't stand it. I checked her cell phone and read the messages that she was of course seeing one or two men and that they were also coming to her house and spending the night. I must say that I mentioned several times that I didn't want my children to sleep in the same bed where she was doing things with men. She agreed with me and says she didn't want that either. In an angry reaction, I told her to leave the party. When she asked why, I told her that I had read her messages. After that, it escalated a bit. She was angry because I had disregarded her privacy. I did not care. I told her how she can be so dishonest and she should leave. Told her that I would never want to see her again. She tried to justify herself with sentences like, I tried not to see him again, but I'm only human and weak, and blah blah blah. It got a bit ugly in the conversation, but then she left. Later, I got a message where she admitted to sleep with men and that she will continue to meet with one. She said she doesn't give a crack about me now and she doesn't care about my feelings anymore. She said how great the sex is and that she has orgasms. She literally wrote that. She also wants to report me for violating her privacy. She thinks I hacked her phone or installed some software, but I still had a fingerprint register and said I provoked her. For me, this was the final line. I now have an appointment with a lawyer and will file for divorce. But what takes me hard is the sentence about the sex. I realized that she wrote that out of anger to hurt me, but it still knocked my confidence. 
A sex life was always okay, but nothing special. I was her first, as she was always rather reserved to discover her own sexual passion. Had also mentioned earlier that she liked her experience. I'm also afraid that now it will come to an ugly divorce, and it will be more of a rose war. Also, regarding the children and the fact that they will eventually see their mother with another man. I had a conversation yesterday with my daughter, close to 10 years old, who doesn't want to be with her mother because she feels uncomfortable there. She was sad because she wants her mother to move back in. I tried to explain to her why that is not going to happen. I told her that it has nothing to do with the children, that mom still loves her, and that I love her more than anything and will always be there for her. I'm not sure how much I can tell my daughter. Something like that, she is dating other men, I think is rather wrong to say. I'm also really scared about the future and how I will feel, how my kids will be, how long it will take me to get over my wife, etc. I'm also not sure what to expect for the post. Probably I just need some encouraging words about the four paragraphs. Update 2 A quick update on my story. It's actually not long ago that I posted this last one, but it feels like an eternity. Recap. So to be ex-wife has slept with other men. I confronted her at her son's birthday party. Bad choice, but need her reaction, and kicked her out. She also wanted to report me for violating her privacy, so that I had installed something on her phone or hacked it or something. What happened since then? Sorry for the wall of text. I wanted to limit the personal contact to absolute minimum and only what is necessary because of the children, and started to follow through. A couple of weeks ago, I had planned a ski weekend with my kids. Just before we left, one of my kids started making a scene because it didn't want to clean up the room. This led to discussions and to the point that the child said it didn't want to go as me and wanted to stay with its mother. So I told the child to call mother and clarify it. Of course it wasn't an auction because of work and who knows what else. I was very emotionally charged at this time because I was really looking forward to the weekend and so were the kids. And because I still blame my soon-to-be ex for the shattered situation and how my kids feel. I had talked several times with said child how it feels and of course it's doing really bad with it. Quite the opposite of what the mother thinks that it must have no effect on the children. Anyway, I then took the phone, because I wanted a confirmation of what is now the matter. It got a little out of hand again, because I expressed to my soon-to-be ex what I think about it, and why it happened. She hung up on me, and I sent her a one-line email with the words, You can hang up, but that doesn't change the truth. The whole thing was like before an emotional act on my side. Meanwhile, I managed better to let the situation cool down first, and then react. See later. This in turn triggered a very long answer from her, also definitely emotionally written, in which she described her truths. I will not elaborate here, but it was about what I did wrong and how I treated her wrong. Also, that she doesn't regret the affairs, but the F, one of them led to an abortion. How can you not regret that? So again, completely trying to shift the blame and responsibility onto me. Also, this is the critical void she wrote. The truth is, I don't want you in my life anymore and I'm ready to divorce you. I took the opportunity to respond to her BS and present things objectively to show her what kind of bubble she's living in. And I took the opportunity to point out to her that she's going to get a letter from my lawyer soon anyway about the divorce. I explained to her in detail and objectively why and why I have no more hope for us. And then came the answer. I did not intend to divorce, but barely you have planned and organized everything. Please, what? Three and a half hours after she wrote about the divorce, she already changed her mind. I did not care and I did not go further into it by replying. The fact is, she is screaming for a divorce with all her behavior and things she says. Maybe not in her illusionary world that she has built up. Because according to her ideas, we would probably stay married, be a family with everything that belongs to it, but she may continue to see other men. This has shown me that she is absolutely not aware of what she has done and has not reckoned with the consequences. Presumably, she must have been shocked with my information. Since then, her contact has been almost exclusively related to the children. I have set up an app with a shared calendar and through which we can communicate child-related. Some time has passed. I was again with the children one and a half weeks on ski vacation, and we had a great time. In the first week, I reckoned that she got the letter from a lawyer. Since I heard the whole time, nothing. I have assumed any reaction. I was already happy it would go harmoniously. On Friday, two weeks ago, came the expected reaction. She wrote a text that she has received the letter and would read everything very carefully. I could literally feel her anger. She then made a few comments about the content which showed me that she was very emotionally charged. She probably thought at the beginning that I was just making an empty threat, and now she has seen that this is not the case. As mentioned before, I also think that she is slowly realizing that her house of cars and wishful thinking is collapsing, and she has to bear the consequences herself. Three days after she received the letter, she wrote me the following message. I will translate it roughly. Dear your OP, I have been longing to apologize to you for everything that happened. 
that you had to suffer because of me and that I hurt you and that everything is destroyed. But I also want to thank you that I could grow up with you. I hope you know that I will always be there for you when you need me, and I mean it. Since we didn't make it as a couple, I would be very happy if we could be good parents for the children, function harmoniously, give them security. I hope I have expressed myself clearly. Thank you. What should I even think about this? What is he apologizing for? For everything? Of course that makes it easy to not have to reflect properly. So, she doesn't have to deal with what she did, and so hopes for forgiveness from me. She is always there for me. But the F, that was part of the vow, and obviously she didn't stick to it. Thanking me for growing up? Again, obviously she hasn't learned the most important lesson. How to handle crises. And by that, I mean the initial marriage crisis that probably triggered this, and after which she ended up in a continuous downward spiral. She clearly wants absolution from me. I don't think she's waiting for an answer from me. I think it's more that she has now said the things she wanted to say and thinks she can now feel better about it. She also said at one point that she will now start to try to see things more positively. Basically what I said to her for years and now she's doing it as she already destroyed her family. I am now for one week to think, yay, no emotional reaction, whether I should give her the satisfaction or take away from her by an answer. Namely to hold at her again the truth before her eyes and the things I mentioned above. I know no contact at all. But in this case, I don't think she's looking for contact, or rather absolution. And my answer would be then only to smash her this desire, and possibly now inner peace, which I assume by the vague wording of this SMS and action itself. Oh, and because of the report for abuse of privacy, she has at some point claimed that she was at the police, but she will not record me. Of course not. Probably she was told that she has nothing in hand and would only make a fool of herself. The divorce itself is initiated, but it takes between 6 and 12 months until the whole thing is true. What do you think? Should I answer or rather not? It's not about wanting to save the marriage somehow. I don't see any hope for it. Also, I would not want it at all. With my wife as she was before, maybe. But she has changed so much for the worse and is now no longer the same. Our first reaction is from Succulent Ebby. It's a trap. With my ex, anything outside of legal matters was just his attempt to get his foot in the door, followed by gaslighting to make me feel bad for leaving him for cheating. Additionally, I think this was her way of getting it off her chest. And don't be surprised if she plays the I apologized card in the future. The OP replies, I also think this was just to make herself feel better. And that's why I'm struggling to respond or not, because I actually don't want her to feel better just from saying that vague stuff. But yeah, as you said, this could also be a way to start a discussion once I reply. Cranach chimes in. The thing is, this is a lot her and how she feels. How you feel doesn't matter to her. It is all about her. If you react to this male now, then you react to exactly what she wants you to react to. Of course she wants absolution. Of course she wants to hear from you that what she did hasn't destroyed you completely because then she can think of what she did wasn't so bad. But it is all about her. Just like when she cheated on you, she doesn't care about you. If you reply now, then you only show her that you still care about her. That's it. This is not about the kids or the divorce. That is only about her. So don't reply. Don't give her what she wants. Reduce all contact to her to only be about the kids and the divorce. That's it. Take care of yourself and stay strong. One more comment from Front.9988. Nothing will torture her more than getting no reply from you. Ignore any texts that are related to co-parenting. Don't let her manipulate you into a petty text exchange that will feed her need for attention. It will drive her nuts when she isn't getting that attention from you. On to the next story. Brother's girlfriend cheated on him. Me, Olivia, 15 female, and my older brother, Ethan, 26 male, are very close. He's like a dad to me, because of the 11 years age difference. He moved out 8 years ago and lives abroad in Mexico, where he also met his girlfriend, Lucia, 24 female. They are now roughly 4 to 5 years together. For the past 4 months, they live with us at her house, for work reasons. Yesterday, I overheard my parents, 58 female, 48 male, talking about how excited they are to finally meet their first grandchild. I was confused. My parents don't have any grandkids, yet. I asked them, and they told me that my brother and his girlfriend are having a baby. They told them last night. They wanted to tell me the next morning. Me and my parents were so excited. I was so happy I will finally have a niece or nephew. But two nights ago I overheard, we have very thin walls, the girlfriend talking on the phone in Spanish with a friend. I was on a call with my BFF, Alba, 15 female whose mother language is Spanish. She stopped me mid-conversation and said, What the hell is Lucia talking about? I was confused. I don't understand Spanish. Alba said, 
Hold your phone against the wall. I want to hear what shit she is talking. I was confused, but still did it. Alba was stunned. She said stuff along the lines of, This bitch, what the F? What, no? And, no estrave. Ha. <laughs> when the call Lucia was on ended, Alba was furious. Basically, she said to me that Lucia was cheating on Evan and that the baby is probably not his. I was shocked. I thought she was joking. But no, she had assured me that she was serious. I ran to Ethan. I told him everything. I will not go into detail. But he didn't believe me. He said I was making it up just because I was jealous that I will not be the only child anymore. Which is completely wrong. I was excited for the baby. He screamed at me, saying I want to ruin his life and much more bad things. He sent me away. I was so upset and angry that he wouldn't believe me. The next morning, my parents talked to me and said that my behavior was completely wrong and that I should stop lying about such insensitive things. They said that I should stop lying. I assured them that I was not lying, but they didn't believe them. I didn't apologize. My brother stopped talking to me and Lucia gave me a look with hate and damage filled. So my question is, what should I do? Please give some advice. Names change for privacy. Please remember that my English is my second language. One response before the update. From I've done the work. Don't worry. This is just blaming the messenger and ignoring the message. The main thing is that it has been brought to everyone's attention. The seeds of doubt have been well and fully sowed. The rest is up to them. Just know you tried to do the right thing, and now the mess will sort out itself. You did nothing at all wrong. It will be blowing up soon. The girlfriend will end up with no boyfriend and a baby on her own. The DNA test will prove who the daddy really is, and if no one apologizes to you, you will know their own lack of character as well. Update. So I talked to my brother with Alba, BFF. She told him everything. He listened the whole time without saying a word. When she finished, he cried. I was so heartbroken for him. He said that he needed time to think. After Alba told him things that only the two knew, he was convinced that she was telling the truth. After an hour, he came out of his room to apologize to me. He said that he was sorry that he wouldn't believe his own blood. He said that he couldn't make up for his actions enough. My parents also apologized, said similar things. After we talked, he talked to Lucia. She didn't lie long. She folded very quickly. There was a long conversation. So yes, in the end, they broke up. Also, the guy she cheated with was one of Ethan's best friends. What the F? Lucia is going back to Mexico, and Ethan is staying for a year in his home country, trying to process all the things that happened. Moral of the story, believe your sister, even if she's younger.